we're going to hear first from Dr. Sean Lin. He is a member of the Committee on the Present Danger of China. He is a survivor of the Tiananmen Square massacre uh, during his time in China. And since he left, um, he has been a prominent uh, figure in certainly the work of this committee um, in bringing to light uh, insights into what China is about, what it does uh, to its own people, and what it aspires to do to the rest of us, in part informed by his experience as a practitioner of Falun Gong, um, a very, very harshly persecuted uh, minority in China, its practitioners. Uh, he is also, uh, by training, a PhD in microbiology, who served in the United States Army and uh, completed his nine years of service in the Army as the director of a viral disease laboratory at Walter Reed. Uh, we've act asked Dr. Lin to um, share with us his insights uh, with the experience of a trained microbiologist, uh, specialist in viral diseases, um, to sort of give us a sense of what this disease is about, what it is likely to um, do in uh, a nation like ours, and how best to counter it. And we're very pleased to welcome Dr. Sean Lin to this virtual threat briefing of the Committee on the Present Danger of China. Dr. Lin, over to you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, thank you for organizing uh, this virtual threat briefing, a uh, very uh, important threat briefing because uh, as we know in the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, there were a lot of debate uh, because the Chinese government has been pushing out a big smearing campaign you know, blaming the US was the source of the uh, virus outbreak and uh, even blaming US military uh, spreading the virus to uh, Wuhan uh, when when the U.S. had a delegation to join in the uh, military uh, competitions, uh, sports competitions in Wuhan last year. So I think this is really actually uh, pissed up a lot of people in the military service. And I think it's a good time to look at what exactly happened in China in, in December and January, uh, what Chinese government did and what happened in, in China regarding this uh, outbreak. Uh, so uh, we can we can now have more insights, uh, know what's happening uh, based on many of the uh, media reports and, and also on social media from Chinese uh, press. So we can, we can see uh, now the first case can actually be traced back to December 1st. And this was actually based on a Lancet report uh, by a Chinese doctor Huan Chaoling from the Wuhan Jinkang Hospital, which is the main hospital that's treating these uh, uh, patients infected with the uh, novel coronavirus. And then on December 8th and 10th, formal case already being hospitalized. And, and one, only one case actually associated with the Huanan Seafood Market. And then then throughout December, more and more uh, patients uh, turn out uh, hospitalized in different hospitals in Wuhan. And actually, uh, some of the samples already being shipped to a um, sequencing company to conduct pathogen discovery. And then by December 26, the Guangzhou Weiyuan genomic uh, company has already obtained a full viral sequence and has already reported to the Wuhan CDC as well. And they mentioned they identify a SARS-like virus with 81% homology. So this clearly is a SARS-like virus. And then the Jing Intang Hospital also conducted uh, many tests to confirm this is a SARS-like uh, virus with uh, additional sampling from the different patients. So this actually already confirmed by December 30, this is a SARS-like uh, virus, a novel coronavirus. But however, on December 30th, the Wuhan Public Health Commission, when they issued the public alert, they still are saying this is an unknown pneumonia, right? And then on December 31st, the Wuhan police actually uh, announced their punishment for the eight doctors who talk about this uh, identification of novel coronavirus on their own social uh, chatting rooms on the WeChat. And Dr. Li Wenliang was one of them. And this is actually already, uh, when, when the Public Health Commission already know this is a novel coronavirus. So on January 1st, 
uh, BGI, one of the biggest genomic sequencing company in China, also obtained the full genome sequence and then submitted to the Chinese CDC. So it's very clear on January 1st, the Chinese authority know this is a normal coronavirus, but they still tell the public this is an unknown pneumonia and they still punish those doctors who try to tell their colleagues uh, about this outbreak of the novel coronavirus in, in Wuhan. And also including uh, Dr. Ifen from Wuhan Central Hospital. She's the one actually sharing those CT images to her colleagues telling about that this is a, a novel uh, coronavirus or SARS-like uh, patients. So all of them got criticized and they got silenced. And so you can see Chinese government already wasted whole months of December in response to this um, outbreak. And then on January, and the, the local government still did not take any active measures to prevent the disease outbreak. And even on January, even on January 17th and 18th, the Wuhan citizens, Wuhan's uh, local governments still organize big community events. And one of the events have more than 40,000 households with more than 100,000 people engaged. And, and this is actually when the Chinese CDC already announced their highest level alert on January 15. So you can, it's really hard to imagine that the local uh, authorities in Wuhan can have such high level of malfeasance in handling this uh, disease. And also we know uh, the Wuhan CDC has also done a terrible job in the initial response to this outbreak. So far, we have not seen any report about the testing results for any animal sample may be collected in the Wuhan area or whether in the one safe market or not. There is no report on any testing results for animal samples. So, so far the whole world still don't know what will be the real uh, animal reservoirs and also no idea who may be the patient zero. The Chinese government still owe the whole of these key questions. And these are very important in terms of epidemiology. So what might be the animal uh, host? What might be the intermediate animal host? Because even if wave of the uh, epidemic pass away, the whole world still need to be alert. What might be the, uh, the animal host? What might be still spreading uh, the virus? As, as through this intermediate animal host. So this is a really, really important question, but the Chinese government still uh, owe the whole world about these uh, questions. And also, uh, I think the, the terrible failure of the Wuhan CDCs and, and Chinese Public Health Commissions uh, on identifying uh, uh, the patient zero and also the animal rest really should be held accountable. And also, especially if need to be held accountable when they're covering up uh, the formation and let the Chinese society missing a very golden about one to two months period to uh, to contain this outbreak. And we know there's recent re report on the, uh, it's a preprint by the University of Southampton from the uh, uh, United Kingdom. And this report is actually joined uh, publication by many scientists from UK, from China, um, from the United States too. And this report clearly, clearly predict uh, if this um, outbreak can be handled uh, by non-pharmaceutical inventions or uh, you know through uh, different measures like social distancing even just you know one week two two weeks three weeks earlier the total case of infected in China could be dramatic difference the number can be reduced to like 66 percent reduction 86 percent reduction or 95 percent uh, reduction respectively if the Chinese government can really be transparent and handle it with a uh, non-pharmaceutical invention one week two weeks or three weeks earlier so this is clearly telling us the Chinese government is, is really uh, the the carpet for the outbreak that's spreading whole world to become a pandemic they need to be held accountable and so this is a uh, a clear scientific, you know, suggestion that the Chinese government did a terrible job covering up, you know, the situations. And that right now they even try to shift the blame to the United States. And I think the whole world is actually paying the price for these Chinese government's malfeasance 
and also their corruption, they are covering up the information. And so this is very, very uh, sad situation. One government's terrible mistake and the whole world have to suffer. And at the same time, we also need to ask about uh, Chinese governments uh, uh, to have transparency regarding about their gain of function uh, studies in their virology lab in Wuhan. And uh, this because the Wuhan Institute of Virology definitely have the capacity to conduct many of the gain of function studies, even uh, based on the previous publication. For example, they already put um, a bad coronavirus S protein on a, a mouse adapted to human uh, uh, SARS coronavirus backbone. And the, the resulting uh, viral mutants was actually, uh, to their own surprise, uh, gaining uh, pathogenicities in the mouse models too. And I saw other reports saying that these groups of scientists in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, Virology may already conduct studies on the research market on some of the gain of function studies. Uh, but, you know, because maybe related to the uh, military projects, and it's very hard to find out additional detail. So I think the Chinese government still also owing the world another explanation whether, um, whether or not they have military project already pushing on the gain of function study on uh, coronavirus or other dangerous um, pathogens like Ebola virus. And the Chinese government signed up the you know, Biological Weapon Convention on 1984. But do they really comply uh, with this convention? So this is another uh, question the Chinese government need to answer to the whole world, because it's really, really a, a fundamental uh, bioethical issue. And the Chinese government's experiment on this front may put the whole humanity in danger as well. So I think uh, this is really an uh, important question as well. So overall, I feel right now, uh, you know, we, we saw that uh, President Trump has been insisting calling the uh, outbreak uh, China, China virus and also Chinese virus and uh, the uh, Secretary Pompeo called it uh, Wuhan virus. I think this is also a, a, a accurate uh, description because the, it described uh, where the outbreak started, where it originated. And this is a common way uh, in the scientific world as well to naming the disease um, based on where the origin. And at the same time, I think it could be even more accurate to call it a CCP virus as well, because it's the, it's the Chinese Communist Party's uh, force to let the whole virus spread into the whole world. And it's like the CCP's curse on the whole world. So I think it could be even more accurate to call it CCP virus as well.